Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Buckner Fellowship. Uh, thank God for all of you that are here this morning. Thank God for uh, those of you who are watching by way of internet. Uh, we thank God for all of you. Um, just wanted to uh, um, thank you all for your prayers. Uh, I was originally going to Miami because we were having a um, having a uh, family reunion uh, get together for my grandmother's, although she's passed now, uh, her birthday is September the 10th, so we were trying to do that before she had passed. And so uh, my cousins and everybody were trying to do, uh, continue to do the same thing every year, get the family together. Uh, so I was already originally going, but Thursday I found that my uncle had a massive stroke. Uh, so I was headed down there anyway. Uh, and so I got a chance to see him. Now he had a stroke about 15 years ago. And he uh, pretty much made it, made it through all of that, and he was, uh, uh, for the most part, normal. Uh, and so um, he was. Uh, they they called me, so I was I left a little bit earlier than what I intended to, so I can go and, and see him, and uh, deal with him. And so he's doing uh, better. They said the uh, uh, his blood pressure was just really high, and he actually is. The I guess the stroke this time is basically the blood in his brain is exactly the same place as last time. Which uh, what they were saying is not going to create any new problems, which is which is good. And so uh, he was actually uh, moving, moving uh, his extremities. When you talk to him, he couldn't really open his eyes, and so they were trying to make sure that he was able to open his eyes, which he did last night before I left. Uh, so so that's good. So uh, just continue to pray for him. Um, and uh, I'll probably go back next week. Next weekend, uh, I have to see how he's doing, and I'll probably go back. Uh, I may take off during the week to see. Uh, once they tell me how he's doing, with how good or bad he's doing, I'll go back down there uh, to check on him. So, uh, but 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 again, uh, uh, it all worked out. I got a chance to also go to my by, by my family, and we had a, a good time last night, uh, and so. Uh, I was able to do that, so just continue to pray for him, uh, and I'll keep you all posted. Uh, uh, but again, thank you all so much for your prayers. Uh, we're probably I may we're probably going to get out early. I actually decided to drive back last night, uh, so I got back at like four o'clock, four thirty this morning. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, so yeah, so anybody, so anybody that had any plans on talking to me today. Uh, I won't be talking to anybody today, okay? So, so, but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm gonna talk to you, Dennis, afterwards. But, but, but anybody else, anybody else, I won't be. Yeah. But, uh, but again, uh, again, thank God for all of your prayers. Uh, 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 pretty. Uh, other than you know, my uncle is a pretty pretty good weekend. Uh, I've got a chance to see a lot of my family, uh, which is always a good thing and it's always refreshing for me. So, uh, thank God for for all of them, uh, and we'll we'll continue to pray. Uh, go, we're going to go ahead and jump into our, our Corinthian study, uh, talking about these spiritual gifts. Okay, go ahead and turn to First Corinthians chapter number twelve, talking about these spiritual gifts. So when I was down there uh, with my uncle, because uh, he, he could hear you and he could he could shake his head if you asked him a question. And so I asked him, was I his favorite nephew? Uh, <laughs> and he shook his head, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so, he, so he's doing pretty good. <laughs> he's at least, yeah, telling, he's at least good. telling the truth. No, 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 yes, no, he has several of them. Let's double check But that was good. Uh, but look at this, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. All right, now we're getting into this, this study of the spiritual gifts, okay? Uh, and as we're coming down through here, we got right uh, uh, through to verse 7 here, uh, got down, talked about verses 4, 5, 6, and 7, all right? And we'll start right there, verse 7, uh, verse 8. All right, but let's read verse, start at verse 4 here. All right, so now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. 
and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh what? All in all. So we talked about how that word same, okay? The same God, the same spirit that allowed men to write prophecy according to uh, 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 the law of uh, God's word according to prophecy in the law was the same spirit that allowed Paul to write about the mystery, okay? All right? And so look at verse 7. But verse 7, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to do what? Prophet, Prophet with all, okay? Uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for this time and this hour. Uh, Father God, we uh, thank you now for uh, the for who you are. We thank you for the provision that you set forth before us. Uh, we thank you for salvation as a present possession. We thank you for your word that we may continue to study it out to show ourselves approved unto you as workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, Father God, we thank you now for each and every individual and under the sound of my voice. Uh, we ask now that you continue to build us up in our inner man as we continue to study your word, uh, that we may live according to your will upon this lost and dying world. Uh, we thank you now for this ministry as we continue to, to, to give the word of truth out. Uh, we continue to, uh, to, to do everything that we can, Father God, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Continue to give us strength uh, when we're weak and continue to give us courage to stand strong and stand fast on the word of God. Uh, we ask now that you just continue to touch those who are sick. Uh, uh, touch my uncle and, and, and all of us as a family. Uh, continue to strengthen and comfort. And we uh, appreciate you for that. Uh, we thank, uh, touch those, all any of those who are sick, especially those who are, who are of the household of faith. Uh, we pray now that you comfort them and strengthen them, Father God, for, for when we are weak, that's when you're strong. And so we thank you for that. Now help us to not be so high-minded. Help us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Uh, but continue to keep us uh, humble, Father God, uh, knowing that all things are lawful unto us, but all things are not expedient. And so we thank you for your word. We thank you for your, uh, <clears throat> for your power. We thank you for all the things that you've done for us. Uh, we ask now that you touch those who we may have come in contact with who are lost in denominational religious systems. Uh, we uh, pray for, for the right things to say as we continue to study your word. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 all right, look at verse 7. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to do what? Profit with what? With all, okay? So again, the purpose of the spiritual gifts was not to big up one particular individual. It was given so that they could profit everybody, okay? So now, when I was kind of studying some of this out, I was asking myself this question, why in the world would God give these carnal Corinthians these particular supernatural gifts? As carnal as they were, why would God give these Corinthians these supernatural gifts? In what form are you talking about? Why would he make them? Why would he give them these gifts, all right, in order to speak in tongues, to prophesy? the words of wisdom, faith, all of these different types of gifts, why would he give the Corinthians these types of gifts of all people? Because they needed the most. Why? They carnal. They needed to study. Okay. Yeah, I think it was a sign to them. Sign of... Okay. The, 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 he the, also knew who they could become. Okay. The membership was mixed too, if you if you remember now. You uh -huh. had Jews and Gentiles mixed in the same place. Right. But in order for the body to grow, they needed to be able to get the word. And the only way they can get the word is to actually be able to communicate with everybody in the building. Because, you know, you say Corinth is on a coast uh -huh. where there were a lot of people coming from <clears throat> Greece and right. everywhere else right. as members. So they, what? So, and, and, and that you're, you're almost there. So what would be the point? What, what was the purpose of the supernatural gifts? To, to spread the word? To give more people to God. To, to God to edifying. Edifying. Okay, That's edifying further, for the purpose to bring them. the gospel. Furtherance of the gospel for the purpose to bring them. What was the problem with the Corinthians? What did Paul say in 1 Corinthians 1? Carnal. Not, so, not carnal, but what else was, what was their issue? We talked about it in First Corinthians one and First Corinthians eleven. They were, they were uh, when Paul when Paul said in First Corinthians one when he was talking to them, uh, he said, "I feel a tension among you, and there be what what among you divisions." divisions. divisions. Okay. The purpose, the reason why God would give these carnal Corinthians these supernatural yeah. gifts was so that they could bring together and form unity, 
right? Just as the Corinthians were misusing the gifts, okay, and were divided, you see the same thing in church today. Mm -hmm. People misuse the gifts because everybody wants the gifts to profit themselves, mm -hmm. okay? But nobody understands the purpose of the gifts. It was to profit with all, okay? So just as Paul understood these Corinthians had divisions among them, he was trying to show them the proper use and the proper purpose of the gift was to bring them closer together. Right? That would be the whole point. But now, because remember now, when Paul wrote these epistles, there was no completed Bible. Right. And as a matter of fact, the people that he was talking to, they had to just believe the words of Paul and the other prophets. Right? They, didn't, they couldn't check it and verify the facts now. Okay? So they just had to believe. That's why a lot of things that Paul was doing, especially early on, because there were Jews, he was still going to the Jew first, he had to perform these certain miracles and signs because that's what the Jews required. They required the sign. So he had to show the signs of an apostle. So that's why early in his ministry, that's what was going on. And because uh, there was no completed Bible at that time, God allowed for the supernatural gifts of wisdom, of, of prophecy, of tongues, so that way people could know the things in the words of God. Because they could not say, well, turn to 1 Timothy, and you see how we can look at the words and say, well, I'm not really sure about that verse. They couldn't do that. They just had to believe that the prophets were saying the right thing. Right? right? And so you could imagine now, because you had all types of false prophets. Right. All right? So you can imagine now having to decipher what was real and what was not. It's, it's a little easier for us today, right, because we have a Bible to test things by, okay? All right, so but understand the carnal Corinthians were doing just the same thing as we see people do today, all right? But the purpose of the gifts was to bring people together in the form of unity. But yet, just like there were divisions in the Corinthian church, there's so much division even in Christendom today. Because you have a lot of people who are saved, members of the body, but stuck in religion, okay? And so that's what Paul was trying to get them to see, all right? Go to Galatians chapter 5. Now, when, when, the, when, when verse 7 says, verse 7 there says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all, what is that manifestation? What does that mean? It means manifestation. Yes. Right. Put, huh? put light on. Okay, put light on, okay? So watch this. So these spiritual gifts, okay, were manifested or were brought light to, all right, in order to bring unity for, so that everybody could profit. You see how we stand up in church today, we go through the scriptures, everybody profits. This is not building myself. Everybody profits from it. Now, if I'm standing up here and thinking I got more gifts than all of you, okay, and then I'm speaking and you don't know what's going on, there's, there's, there's division there. That creates a, a, a separation within the body. All right, which means that I, I have this, and in order for y'all to get to God and know the word of God, y'all got to come through me, all right? At this time, because there was no written Bible, they had to go through somebody, the prophet or whoever was speaking the word, in order to know the words of God, all right? Look at this. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Three or five? Three, verse five. Galatians 3, verse 5. Did I say 5 first? Yes, you yes. yes. said a 5 first, but you didn't say chapter or verse. Galatians 3, verse 5. Yes, sir. We have it? Yes, sir. He, therefore, that ministereth to you the what? Spirit. spirit. Okay, watch this now. Notice that he ministereth the spirit. Okay, how did how how did he minister the spirit? How do you how did they then minister the spirit? Huh? Worship. Worship in what in what form? Minister. What was being manifested? Teaching. The gifts, okay? So they were able to minister the Spirit through worship and those types of forms by way of these particular gifts, all right? So they ministered the Spirit, all right? Because remember now, it was the same Spirit that gave diversity to gifts, diversity of operations, diversity of administrations, okay? So that's how they ministered the Spirit. But watch this. And worketh what? Miracles, Miracles among you. 
doeth he it by the works of the what? Law. Or by the hearing of what? Faith. Faith. You see that? So just as these people back here, all right, the same way people do today, they're trying to minister the spirit by the works of the law. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the, by the hearing of faith. You see that? So understand, when, even when the gifts were in operation, people were misusing them because they were trying to do it for the wrong reasons. All right? Trying to do it. Same thing that we see today. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians. Uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Before we go, 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 go to 1 Thessalonians real quick. This will probably speak better to what I want to say here. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Look at verse 1. <clears throat> we have it? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, for yourselves, brethren, know our interest in unto you that it was not well. In vain. In vain. Now, remember now, Paul's early epistles... 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Romans, all right? Excuse me, you, you're going to see a lot of, uh, uh, number one, Paul validating his apostleship. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot of use of the different spiritual uh, gifts and signs because he was still going to the Jew first, and they required these things, okay? But notice here in verse 1, he says, their interest unto you was not what? Not in vain. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 2, but... Even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much what? Contention. With much contention. Now remember, this is when Paul and Silas in Acts 16, all right, were beaten because they were preaching the gospel. They were thrown in jail, all right, but then the uh, uh, Philippian jailer at the time wanted to know how can we be saved. So even in, in, in Acts 17, all right, they went back to the place to when they were beaten, okay? All right, they went back into the fire, so to speak, because in Acts 17, they went to Thessalonica, okay? And so they went back. So understand, Paul is saying, we, when we came to you now, it was much contention, but guess what? We were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Look at verse 3. For our exhortation or our comfort or our encouragement was not of what? <laughs> nor of uncleanliness, nor in what? God. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we what? Speak. Not as pleasing men, but God which tries what? Now, look at verse 5. For neither at any time use we what? Flattering words. Flattering words, okay? Because again, Paul was not trying to deceive them. He was trying to bring them together in the spirit and per perfect bond of unity as the Bible speaks about every joint being fitly together, okay? He was doing it by just giving them the truth. But unfortunately, so many people, just as the false prophets in that day, and just like so many people today in church that are preaching, have to do all of these gimmicks and show and entertainment in order to get people to try to believe. You don't, it doesn't require all that. All right, but because they're trying to profit themselves, that's what they have all these gimmicks and uh, uh, things carried on. Okay, but notice Paul says he did not come to them with flattering words. He didn't come to them uh, 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 trying to please men, but it was God. All right, look at verse five. For neither any time use we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness. God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the what? Now, what is he saying? Paul did not charge. This was one of the ways that they could know that Paul was the, the real apostle of Christ and not just uh, uh, some counterfeit. Because he, all the other guys that came in would charge. And you remember in 1 Corinthians uh, 10, they were basically, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, they were basically saying how Paul was not even charging them. So how could, because all these other people, they would rather pay somebody else but wouldn't pay Paul, and they thought it was a knock on Paul, not them. All right? Which is the same thing you see in church today. Amen. There are so many people who have given money to ministries that does not edify or build them up in the mystery in the body of Christ. Just imagine if they take that money and give it to ministries that are teaching truth. 
Right. Would it be correct to say that not only did he not charge, but the money that they did give, he had had sent to the apostles? Right, absolutely. The things that they did collect, especially from certain uh, 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 saints, he gave it to somebody else. Because remember, Paul was a tent maker. Now he went to work. Okay? So he didn't, because he did not want to make the gospel of Christ any charge. Sure. All right? Sure, he was an account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did not want to make the gospel of Christ of any charge. And that's the main thing we see today. People are basically saying that in order to receive something from God, you got to give money. Right? That's not true, okay? That is so far from the truth. The, 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 the people that are speaking truth, okay, all right, are not asking you for money, all right? Because remember now, if I'm trying to profit you at all, and half the time people ain't got no money, okay? Everybody, people don't have money. It's, it's, a, it's a tough society in which we live in. People don't have money, okay? All right, now. Just as uh, uh, Peter said in Acts uh, uh, two uh, three, he said, "Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have." Right? As a preacher, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. So you should make your own living. Okay? All right. And then at the same time, now preach the gospel and give people truth. All right. The craziest part about it is that the preachers, the the most thing that they preach about is faith and money. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to money, they don't have faith. Yeah. Right? And that, that's the, the most baffling thing to me is that faith and money is all they talk about. Oh, all right, Pastor, I got a problem. Oh, just have faith. Mm -hmm. I lost my job. Just have faith. Mm -hmm. Anything you come to them with, just have faith. But then when it comes to the money, you should turn around and say, Pastor, just have faith because I don't have it today. <laughs> and see what they say. Then they're going to condemn you. Oh, yeah. see, God going, you know, uh, 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 God curses to him that doesn't give. All of, all, they're going to say all of these type of things. But when you try to ask them for some guidance in Scripture, all they say is have faith. Faith and money, but yet when it comes to money, they have no faith. Yeah. Um, isn't it true, though? Um, it's the pastor's worthy of double honor. Or uh, those that, that right. Don't, the, right the divine, but uh, those that uh, 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 study and, and, and uh, uh, doctrine. Okay. Sound, doctrine, right? Sound doctrine, okay? So again, if it's not doctrine, they're not worthy of the double honor. Yeah. Because if you're preaching to put people about, uh, under the law by paying tithe, that you're not worthy of any double honor mm -hmm. for that, mm -hmm. right? Because you're not teaching the right word of God. Right. You see that? But they'll use those scriptures to say how they should be getting paid, all right? And sometimes, Pastor, they'll they ask you, are you paying your tithe? Uh -huh. You know, because if you're not paying your tithe, yeah. That means you can't get positions in the church. You can't do this. You can't do that. All right, and they hold a office, okay? Because the Bible says he that desired an office. And I know, especially the organization I was in. If you didn't pay no money, you you could desire all you want, okay? You weren't gonna get it. All right. So, but that's that's the crazy part about it that people go along with these things, and mainly because they're ignorant of the scriptures. All right. And then you have the people that are up front using spiritual gifts as a means to profit themselves and not profit with all. All right, but because people are being more entertained and heaping to themselves, and having itching ears, heaping to themselves teachers that's going to tell them what they want to hear, okay? Then that's why you have all this confusion. It's almost like that second that you paid your rent. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Absolutely, and that's technically what's going on. I, obviously, the church, if you have a building, as we do here, it has expenses, okay? So that's what you pay your money to, okay? If you pay, there's no special promise from God that you're going to receive anything, okay? All right? And, that, and again, when you're up front with people, people don't have any problem with giving to, uh, to, to support something, okay? Uh, if you're transparent, which is exactly what we try to be. Because, again, you're not, you're not, I'm not going to promise you anything if you give money other than the fact that the lights will be on when you get here. Okay, that's all. That's all we can promise. Okay, so if you pay money here, that's all we can promise is that the lights will be on and there'll be a place for us to come. Okay, but other than that, God is not giving you any type of supernatural gift of blessing because you pay for it. All right, and as a matter of fact, speaking of that, let's finish up here because we're going to get to to somebody in Acts that's like that. Except he loves a cheerful giver. She loves a cheerful giver. Absolutely, he loves a cheerful giver because a cheerful giver is one that furthers the gospel. Okay. Furthers the gospel, all right? Look at this. Verse, let's drop down 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's drop down to verse, for the sake of time, let's go to verse 9. 
Paul says, for ye remember, brethren, our what? Labor. Labor and travail. What is travail? Hardship. Pain. Pain. All right. And you normally hear that dealing with what? Labor of having a baby. Childbirth, okay? All right, so that's the that's what he's saying. I want you to get the, the understanding of that now, all right? So he says, you remember our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we would not be what? Chargeable. Chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the what? Gospel of God. Gospel of God. The good news of God. And he made it free, right? But yet when you go to church, they charge you for it. They charge you to hear the gospel. They charge you rent, all right, to come take up a space and sit in the building, right? And then as much as you sit there, as much as you're paying for the rent, it's essentially as if the lights aren't on because you don't hear any truth. You see that? You don't hear any truth, okay? Yeah, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. All right, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Now look at verse 10. You are witnesses, and God also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that what? Amen. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as father, as a father doth his what? Children. Children. That ye would walk worthy of God who had called you unto his kingdom and what? Amen. Now they were already brethren, and so that means they were already what? Saved. Amen. So now the thing is, walking worthy, all right, of what you already are, understanding who you are in Christ, and walking worthy of that, all right? Now, look at verse 13, because remember, when we talked about the spiritual gifts, they didn't have a completed Bible. All they could do was listen to the, listen to the prophets. Look at verse 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of who? Man. Man, this is important now, it is. right? Because the only way they could receive the word of God was from who? Men. Man. They didn't have a Bible now that they could check facts with, right. okay? So Paul is saying, we thank God that when you receive the word of God from us, you didn't receive it as just what? Men. Yeah. But as it is in what? Truth. <laughs> the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that, in you that what? Believe. Believe. All right? And so now, when Paul says he received it not as men, but as in truth, all right, what he's saying here is, all right, when you heard it, that's why when we teach here, we go through the scriptures, right? Because when you hear it, you don't receive it as, oh, Pastor Hobbs, know the word. No, no, you receive it as, okay, dang, look at how much truth we know, right? Right? That's how you receive it because, you, again, people look for preferences in people and men, but the, the reality of it is, it's not about the individual, it's about the word, yeah. right? Because no matter how stylish I am and I, uh, my way of preaching, that may be preferential for some people, but if, if it's the word that you're seeking, then that's the word is what you should be getting. That's, that's what's going to build you up, Amen. okay? Just because somebody can hum and hum and sing and all of that, if there's no light involved, if there's no built, no edification, no truth, all right, then, then it's just a waste of time. It's in vain, all right? Mm. It's in vain. Then he goes on to say, the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that what? Believe. Mm. Remember, the spirit was still being manifested through spiritual gifts. So the more they knew the word, the more it would effectually work in them so that it could be manifested so they would profit with all. All right? It would profit with all. Okay? Now, yes? And, and, and now that, hearing that, it makes you realize how, because, you know, we, we take for granted that we have the word. Written, right. Absolutely. And we had it before so that there's a confirmation. Right. You know. Even as you speak and, and, and the Spirit do give us understanding, we know that this is the truth and right. the way what you were saying is true. But with those people, it was just the Spirit. Right, that's it. They didn't it. have a, a written book. Right, that's so it. So I, I can imagine standing there and that, that's all they have is His Word. Word, right, right. And so they didn't receive it as men and then God had to confirm it through their gifts. Spirit, right, right, absolutely. And, and I think those gifts came to so that they could see that this is the truth. This is the truth and that's exactly why it came. <laughs> so they know that this is the apostles. Now, first of all, they weren't charging. So that let you know right there that they got to believe in God because they ain't charging us, okay? All right, so, and secondly, when they would do these particular things, because a lot of the false prophets that, that, in that day couldn't perform the certain miracles that Paul and the apostles could perform, 
right? And so understand, those were signs that this is the word of truth. The things that they're saying is from God. That's why every time you see somebody speak in tongues, we have, we have an account of it. You see that? Because the gift was not just for somebody to say they spoke in tongues. It was for the purpose of profiting with all, right? That's why we can see about it, all right? Go to Acts chapter 8. Go to Acts chapter 8. All right, this is, a, and again, this is going to be an example of what we see in church today. People think that they could buy God, okay? Yeah. They could buy a blessing, okay? Yeah. Like you buy a vial in the video, in the game show. <laughs> People think they could buy a blessing from God, okay? If I just paid my money. But guess what? If that was the case, who would be, who would be the people that are most blessed? The rich people. The rich people. Yeah. They got the most money to give. So if God was giving blessings based on how much you gave, then... <laughs> us poor people now, we wouldn't we wouldn't have anything. We wouldn't have any blessing from God. Alright? Now, for those of us who are saved, we understand we have what? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We don't have to give no money to get that now. All that's free. All we have to do is what? Believe it. Yeah, yeah. That's all we have to do. Alright? Look at Acts chapter 8. Let's look at verse 9. But there was a what? Certainly. Now, remember going through our Acts study, for those of you who were with us for a while, because this is long, long ago, all right? When the Bible talks about a certain man, what is it talking about? Someone called. Huh? When the Bible says, in the book of Acts particularly, when the Bible says a certain man. It's a matter of people. What was it, what was, who was it in reference to? Simon. Huh? Simon. Well, that's who this particular passage of scripture is about, yes. But when it talked about a certain man. Christ. No. Now, re remember prophecy, re prophecy, prophecy had two meanings. There was always a what? Exact and then future. Right. So when it comes to prophecy, there was always a current prophecy, right, speaking about the matter at hand. And then there was always a future prophecy, Okay. So when the, when the book of Acts talks about a certain man, all right, it's actually an actual person, okay, but it's a type and shadow of the nation of Israel, all right? So whenever the Bible, in Acts, whenever the Bible speaks, it's a, a certain man, it was an actual account of what's going to happen, but it was also a future prophecy to them, to the nation of Israel, okay? So, so when you read this, this certain man He's going to point to the type of person, a uh, type of the nation of Israel at a certain period of time. All right? So let's see this, and, I, and I'll show it to you. But there was a certain man called who? Simon. Which before time in the same city used what? Sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great what? Some great one, okay? So now, watch this. If you want a Jew to believe, you're going to, you're going to do what? Signs. Perform signs, miracles, and wonders. Which is why Paul told the Galatians in Galatians 3 and 1, who hath what? Bewitched you. Right? This, what, look at what it say. It says, Simon, which before time in the city used what? Sorcery and did what? Bewitched the people of Samaria. People are being bewitched even today. Right? They're being bewitched just as Galatians 3 was talking about because they're being put under the law. Receive ye the spirit of God by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Right? So people are being bewitched to think that if I give money, then God is going to bless me. If I pay my tithe, then God is going to give me this blessing. If I speak in tongues, then God is going to truly bless. All of these gimmicks. Okay? When you understand the Bible, to fully understand it, you got to understand when it was written. Right? When Paul is talking about 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, it was written at a time during the transition period. Right? The only reason Paul is speaking about it is because the Corinthians were doing it wrong. Right? That's the only reason. He's not telling them that, you know, because again, the, the, the spiritual gifts were in operation at that time. But in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, prophecy shall cease, tongue shall cease. When that which is perfect has come, that which is perfect has came, it's the completion of God's word. Because remember, at a time, they had to only hear what the preacher, what the apostle was saying and believe it. But now we have a perfect, complete word of God that we can verify things by. 
You see that? Mm -hmm. So now the spiritual gifts are no longer needed. Amen. Because if the purpose of the spiritual gifts was to bring unity, how much more unified can we be when we all have the same word? Amen. And we know it's the word of God. Back then, they, they had to decipher who was the, the false prophet, who was not. There were, there were even letters, as Paul said in 2 Thessalonians. There were even letters from, of counterfeit letters from Paul all over. all over. But today, they're counterfeit Bibles. They're counterfeit words of God. But we can decipher the difference. But we have to be what? Studied up first. It's impossible to see the counterfeit when you don't even know the truth. Because you'll believe anything at that point, right? So look at this. So there was some bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was somewhat great one. That's what these preachers do. Amen. Making themselves seem like they're the end all, say all, be all. And if you really want to get close to God, you got to listen to what I got to say. Right? It's all about profiting themselves, not profiting with all. Because remember, the spirit is going to manifest and profit where? With all. Not just for one person to dig himself up or herself up. All right, look at verse 10 here. To whom what? They all. They all gave to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great what? Power of God. Don't you see the same thing with people today in church? Ooh, that, that brother's anointed. That sister's anointed. Huh? They say. That, no, that, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, to, touch not the touch not the Lord's anointing. They, they, they quit to say that. All right, touch not the Lord's anointing. Okay, and I remember somebody said that to me. Somebody said that to me one time, and I said, "Well, I'm not touching the Lord's anointing." And then they come back and say, "You know, this and that." And I say, I, and, uh, "You know, what is anointing? Who? How do you know that this man that you're talking about is anointing?" Right. right, and so again, people don't. Well, I'm not gonna debate with you. I just know. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. Now, you want to actually want to talk about the Bible? Then we can do that. But I see you don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to get off the subject, uh -huh. but you know, it's disheartening when you are trying when you you're talking to people about what the word say, and they say, "Oh, man, wrote that too." You right. Know, like, right, right, right. Like you, you, you know, you're saying that, but. You know, this is not true. This is true. Right, right, right. right. And you are saying, you know, like we read our word, right. and, and we go to saying them, they, 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 they like, well, how you, but, a man wrote that. For those, but for those individuals that say that, I ask them, what do you believe? Because whatever you believe, a man wrote that too. Okay, yeah. so so it's all a matter of faith, all right. Yeah. But but again, people try to discredit the Bible, saying a man wrote it. All right, the thing about the Bible we read that a man wrote, it tells the future. Okay, what you're talking about that a man also wrote. So if you're going to use that argument against me, then that means that dispels what you believe also. So you shouldn't believe what you believe. If a man wrote that too, this, uh, because everything that got everything that happened, the, the difference is this book was supernaturally written. Okay, because there are things in it that speak prophecy. No other book, the Quran. I've studied that. No, uh, no other book or the Bible. Okay, speaks and tells the future. Because they can't. They don't know it. You see that? So the Bible is one thing that tells the future. It speaks about things. It prophesies things that either have not happened, that will happen, or has happened over the course of time. He said everybody could... Go ahead. He said everybody could be wrong. Well, there's only one that's right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and the thing is... Because at a time when I was studying... Because I just... I, I just at one point, I was like, well, I just grew up a Christian, but is that really the right thing? So I was studying all types of stuff, okay? Uh, uh, I read the Quran, studied the Quran, studied all that. Uh, but the Bible, there, there, there's all of that stuff has uh, flaws in it, okay? But when it comes to the Word of God, especially when you know how to study it, all right, everything is fit together perfectly, all right? And just the way it's written, I mean, you read the, all different type of books. I've read any book that can be put together. You tell us that's supernatural. Right, right, right. right. Which is just the way it's put together. <laughs> Especially when you know how to rightly divide and go back to see what's what, yeah, okay? Yeah. It, it, it's perfect, okay? It's perfectly put together. And if a man wrote it, this must be the smartest man ever, okay? Right. Okay, <laughs> because the way it's put together now, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a master, it's truly a masterpiece of God's word, which is why God wants us to study it, because otherwise he would have nothing to hold us accountable to, right? He has nothing, because if God just said, do what you want, I'm God, I know, like people say, well, God is in my heart, okay? 
then if that was the case, God could not hold me or you accountable, okay, to his word because we don't know it. But that's why God, it says, Psalms chapter 12, uh, uh, chapter 12 verse 6 and 7, it says that the, uh, the word of the Lord purifies seven times and remain forever. Okay, so, so the word of God is always here. All right. The problem is people don't are too lazy to study it. So they say, "Oh, I know, I know God personally." See, you put the Bible as being a, 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 a above Christ. No, but Christ is God. He is no, no. Yeah, He also is the Word. Okay. All right. But 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 people because they don't want to study it. Okay. All right. They say that, "Oh, I know God in my heart. I have a personal relationship with Him." All right, you got a relationship with somebody, but it ain't the God of this Bible, okay? All right, because again, that's why God requires us to study it, all right? And then you got to realize that it also tells you what's happening. It says a natural man will never even know, even if you tell him what's right. going on. Right, right, he because again, the Bible is a spiritual book, okay? Mm -hmm. We are a spiritual being. The problem is most people want to use the spiritual book to gain some natural wisdom. All right, people ask people ask me Bible questions all the time, but they want a natural answer. All right, I'm not going to give you what you want to hear. I'm going to give you what the answer spiritually to what you ask me. Now, because of what we are and because of what we know spiritually, we can then maneuver upon this earth, okay, in a godly manner. All right, that's why it's that's why it's important for us to study it because again, if we don't know it. Then how can we how can we do things according to what God wants us to do? Because if we don't know it, then we don't know it. We can't do something we don't know how to do. All right. Look at this Acts eight. Look at this. So Simon the sorcerer. Now he had all these people thinking he was God because he was able to do what? Miracles. All these signs and wonders. And that's what people want to see today. Oh, my bishop got the got the gift of healing. I saw him heal this person and all of this stuff. Now the bishop is great, right? And all of that brings, that doesn't profit anybody, okay? All of that brings glory to this person. Just like that, this man must be some great man of, of power of God. Look at verse 11. And to him they had regard because that of, of long time he had bewitched them with what? Sorceries. Sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and what? Amen. So they believed Simon, but when they heard the truth, okay, right, they believed that. Now look at verse 13. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was what? Baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were what? Done. Which were done. Now watch this. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them who? Peter now watch this. What did Jesus tell them about staying in Jerusalem? Don't go too far. Yeah, he says, stay Until when? Until I return. Until he came back. Yeah. So were they disobedient? Yeah. Yes, in a sense. Huh? They weren't supposed to leave Jerusalem and they were the apostles. So in a sense, yes. All right, so now. One thing about Peter and John, if you notice, right, they had the ability, right, to do things the other apostles couldn't do, all right? So when they went out, it was only because they heard that they had been what? Baptized. The only way back then to receive the Spirit of God was from the what? The laying on of hands from the apostles. So they, 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 they were justified in going, all right, so that they could lay hands, so that they could receive this gift of the Spirit, all right? Now, look at this. But notice it was only Peter and John. The rest of them stayed put. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive what? For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord who? Jesus. All right, so now, watch this. This is why people think that even today, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues at a different point of salvation. All right, watch this. Were these people, were these people saved? No. no. Huh? Not when they were baptized. Yeah. No. They baptized no. in the name of Jesus Christ. They saved if they got the heart. Huh? They saved. Is it Acts? Yes. If they believe, they saved. Acts 8, Acts 8, verse 16. They believe, they say. No. no. They didn't have all those they had their door. What did they believe? Oh, that's is right. the key. All right. They, were just, huh? they didn't have the Holy Ghost. 
Right. So watch this. When they were baptized, they were only baptized in who, in whose name? Under whose baptism? John. John's, John's baptism. John's water baptism didn't save anybody now. That was just a prerequisite for the people of Israel. Okay? So that's why there was a separate conversion between the spirit, all right, and what people would consider salvation. But guess what? They were never what? Saved. Because they still had to go through and endure the tribulation. When we talk about being saved, we don't have to go through the tribulation. We're saved from wrath through him, through Christ. Right? So that's what it means to be saved. All right? Now, the Bible talks about all types of different salvations and, and, and deliverance. Salva salvation just means deliverance. All right? We're delivered from the wrath to come. They were not. They were baptized under John's baptism. Right? That's why what people say was a separate thing. Because a lot of people say today, Oh, I was saved back in 62, but I didn't receive the gift of the Spirit to 65. Oh, I remember that day. <laughs> no, no, no. Today, once you're saved, okay, right, you receive the Spirit of God. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's not a separate uh, 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 account, okay? But again, when you read the book of Acts and you don't rightly divide, okay, it creates for that type of confusion. Because they were never present tense saved as we are today in this dispensation. Right? So they were just baptized unto John. All right? Look at this. Question. Look at, yes. Their time was before, right? Uh, this is John. in Acts 8. So yeah. this is before Acts 9 when Paul got saved. Yeah, that's right? what it is. All right? Look, two. look at verse 17. Acts 8, verse 17. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received what? Because the only time at that time for a person to receive the Holy Ghost, they, it had to be by the laying on of hands of the apostles, which is why you see that today. Oh, come down, you saved, tell the people that you're saved, you know, in the mic so you can confess, all right? And then, now we got to lay hands on you so you can receive the Holy Ghost. God is not operating like this anymore. Uh-huh. When you say they receive the Holy Ghost, does he dwell in them? No. Just touch them? No. Because remember now, they were receiving the Holy Ghost as a means, all right, not so much indwelling them, all right, but as a means to speak the things of God. Right. Because watch this. Look at verse 17, uh, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them what? Money. He offered them money. Which is the yeah. same thing people do today. Yeah. Right? Did you see it, Satan see it, what, witnessing this? Yes. yes. I'm going to make a field there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely, right? So, so under, now understand, when it says he offered them money, when people get into and grow up in church, especially in particularly religion, they grow up seeing things, right? Mm -hmm. They see how much uh, uh, celebrity status these preachers get. They see how much money they get, right? So they want, to, they want the same thing. So they're missing the point of the purpose of becoming a bishop or speaker, a preacher. Just as Simon was missing the point of the purpose of the Holy Ghost. He was missing the point, right? Look at this. He's offering them money for a spiritual gift. <laughs> Which essentially is the same thing people are doing today when they pay tithe. They're offering money to receive something spiritual in nature from God. And, reality, and, and, and in reality, they don't really want anything spiritual. They want that natural house. They want that natural car in which we should be seeking things above, not things on what? The earth. Right? So they claim to be so spiritual, but yet the exchange is only natural. Right? They're paying the preachers, their preachers getting rich, and then there's no return on their investment. Right. All right? Now I gotta use some accounting terms here now. There's no return on investment. Because not only do they not receive the things of the natural, but they definitely don't receive the things of the spiritual. Right? right? So you get robbed both ways. Right. You they just don't have a gun to your head. Right. But you get robbed either way. Uh-huh. What about people that say like what's what's What's, I, I hear that argument a lot. What's wrong with it? Oh, absolutely nothing. But then it's like I'm saying for the purpose. I'm saying for the purpose of going out to try to receive something spiritual. You're supposed to go out and make money. 
Yeah. You're supposed to do that because you need money to, to live, okay? You're supposed to do that. There's nothing wrong with making money. I'm talking about specifically for the purpose of trying to receive some special pre uh, preeminence from God based on you giving money. I think, were you talking about the pastor? No, I'm not talking about the pastor. I'm not talking yeah. about just the pursuit of some of these carnal things. People kind of get into, well, it doesn't say any, it's anything wrong with it. Right, but right. it's not it's not righteous. So there's like a, 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 a thin line. No, there, there's nothing wrong with trying to make money. Okay. okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing. The issue or the problem becomes when you're trying to put that above understanding things of the spiritual right, things. Right, right. Yeah. Right? All right? It's just about prioritization, okay? <laughs> you're supposed to. Think. Right, because you're supposed to. If a man doesn't work, he shall not eat. Right. You're supposed to work and make money. All right, right. You're supposed to do that. So now, when the preachers aren't working, but depending on your your gift, all right, to receive their their income, okay, that's where the problem lies. All right, because again, just as every other apostle and such had jobs, okay, Peter was a fisherman, Paul was a tent maker, even Jesus was a what? Carpenter. Okay. They, they was they they he was asking about it because he saw he saw profit and he saw financial gain. Huh? Simon saw a right. financial gain. Right. He so saw you don't you don't preach because there's a financial gain. Right, absolutely. Money. I don't get paid from this. So okay. it should be the other way, it should be like almost like what 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 G three does. Like if G three is doing this because they can make money as a non profit, uh -huh. then that priority is wrong. It should right. be like, I'm doing this for to them. help the right. I'm teaching in the school right. so that I can have an opportunity right. to, to impart a spiritual gift to somebody. Right. And, and that's the whole point, okay? Because again, Paul also talks about they who preach the gospel ought to live of the gospel. Okay, that that that's in there, okay? All right, now, more importantly though, like you said, it's the it's the principle and the motive. Okay? Yeah. Most of these preachers are preaching, okay whether they want to admit it or not, for the purpose of their income. Okay. Because they consider it a job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like when I go to work to provide for my family, that's something I have to do. Yeah. So they feel like, okay, to, to keep this house and these car, all these cars, preaching is my job. It's something I have to do. Which, they, they, it, takes, it takes away the responsibility of it. Okay, because now you're treating it as something you have to do. This is a desire. You know what God, you don't have to do this. Right. You can go sit down. But because they, they do it because they get the money. They get the income. All right? Now, they won't admit that, okay? That's all right? Motive, but that's their motive, right. right? That's their motive. And then you have people in the church that can't even can't even eat, can't do anything. But you got a whole lot of money. You see that? Um, and I think yeah. with, that, with money, it's the love of money. Yeah. Right. It's the love of money. Is so when you start putting money above other things, or you want to do whatever for the money, right? And that's when your priorities are wrong. There you go. So. There you go. And and, and again, uh, th there's always a problem with money in the church. Okay, uh, simply because the issues are not properly understood. Okay, all right. When it comes to church, all right, God does not want your money. He does not need your money. Okay, so anything that's involving the church, you're not going to get closer to God. You're not going to get a better relationship with Christ. No blessing, no none of that. God does not require. A, he doesn't deal with any of that. The purpose of the giving money in the church is only so that you can be a blessing for the furtherance of the gospel. That's it. You don't receive anything for it. Just as the laying on the, of, of Holy Ghost of the Holy Ghost, as Simon is saying, he wanted because he's like, oh shoot, if I could yeah. do that, I'm already bewitching him because of the sorcery. Yeah. I really gonna be able to kill him with that, with the Holy Ghost. You know, that's what that's all he was thinking, right? Yeah. You see that? Yeah, because I was gonna say he he hit on it when he said it's not money itself. Right. You can have money. It's the love of money. Right, right. You shouldn't make that love of money become an idol right. and block Christ out. Right, right, If right. it's more important for you to make a buck than it is to teach the word, then you have a problem. Right, 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 right. right. And, and, and that becomes the issue. That becomes the issue, like you say, because I guess that, like you brought up, there is a fine line between going after money in a sense of searching for it Right and doing anything you you know possibly can to get it, all right. Uh, uh, but you're not studying. You're not, you're you're not showing grace. You're not being gracious. You're not being an ambassador of Christ. You're not doing anything. 
Yeah. All right, because based on whatever job you have, whatever money they pay you, that's like you said, that's an opportunity to talk to people about the gospel of God, uh, about the grace of God. All right, so so you can use everything as a means to preach the gospel, right? Not the other way around. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, look at this. Look at uh, Acts eight. Look at verse eighteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, look at this. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them what? Money. 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 All right. Saying, give me also this what? Oh. That whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the what? Holy Ghost. So now, did he really want it for that purpose? Oh. Right? Watch this now. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, yeah. All right, look at verse 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with what? Money. And it's the same way that people think today. They think that the gifts of God can be purchased with what? With money. Right? It, 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 it can't be, okay? Look at this. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of who? God. In the sight of God. Okay, and then he's going to go back and speak some things to, to, to Simon. So now, when it talks about this, understand when it comes to spiritual gifts now, it has nothing to do with how much you can pay for it. Right. All right? It has nothing. To, it's a free gift. Yeah. God doesn't need or want your money. All right, so whenever you got these people coming up with come and find out what your spiritual gift is, but pay a fee, that's so against the Bible, I, I don't know, that's not even funny. You see that? But people would go and do that because they want to find, I just need to know my purpose in life. I need to know what my gift is, you know? All right, I just need, I had a, a person that commented Wednesday night on, 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 the, uh, on, the, on the video was saying that the people at church church told her she had a gift of hospitality, right? It's the of the work is. Right, right, and that's what you know. She used to work and do all of this stuff for the church, you know. And she, they said she had a gift of hospitality, but that ain't no gift. You, I mean, anybody can have hospitality. Again, it's not a talent or anything. Okay, being hospitable is just being mannerable. I see people get caught up in that that gift of hospitality so much that they hospitable. Everywhere else but outside of their house. <laughs> <laughs> they go out and they serve in the church. And, and every time it's an event to cook for something, they cooking at the church. Yeah. They cook at their house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's your first ministry. Though. Right. That's your first ministry at the house. And, and again, because people have you brainwashed to think that whatever you do for the church, you know, God is going to be pleased with that. All right. And again, all of these different things has nothing to do with... That goes with, back to Mark, and honor thy father and thy mother. Right. Say, honor your father and thy mother first. Absolutely. He said, I got to give to the church. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. And again, go back to 1 Corinthians 12. And again, when we talk about these different issues now, remember, Paul is starting off saying, now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you what? Ignorant. Ignorant. And when it comes to spiritual gifts, just like the Corinthians, even today, there are so many people that are spiritually what? Ignorant. Amen. They just don't know. Right? These gifts are in operation because of when the books were written. Right? Paul was writing to them because they were supposed to, at that time, be using the gifts as a means of forming unity, not more division. Okay? Look at this. Verse uh, 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 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For want for to one is given by the Spirit the word of what? Wisdom. To another the word of what? Knowledge. By the same what? Spirit. By the same Spirit. All right? It was to for the purpose of establishing. The, the gifts was for the purpose of establishing the body of Christ. Right? Go to Romans chapter uh, 1. Go to Romans 1. Romans 1, let's look at verse 11. Because remember now, the manifestation of the Spirit is the prophet who? With all. With all, everybody. Right? There's no, there's no secret society of, of the people who got the spiritual gifts and who don't. Okay? Look at this, verse 11. 
Romans 1. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some what? Spiritual, Spiritual gift. gift to the end ye may be what? Established. That was the point of the gift, to establish them. Establish them in what? Go to Romans 16. You could also say to begin now, right? Huh? To begin, absolutely. To establish means to what? To begin, to start. Right? The foundation of things. So the spiritual gift was to establish them in the right doctrine. Okay? Look at Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is a power to what? Establish. establish. Not establish. Because all throughout Romans, he gave you the spiritual gift or the doctrine so that, just, so that you can be established. But now by the end of Romans, you have the doctrine. So now it just what? Establishes you or stabilizes you. Right? According to my what? Gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world what? Began. Yeah. That's the gift, the doctrine. How we teach the doctrine. Right? That was the purpose of God giving the spiritual gifts in order to enhance the doctrine. But yet the spiritual gifts are running rampant even today and there's no doctrine being enhanced. There's a lot of emotionalism. There's a lot of entertainment and gimmicks, but there's no doctrine. There's nothing being established other than emotionalism, right? That's the whole point. Now, go to uh, uh, Ephesians 4. Look at verse 12. Well, start at verse 11. And he gave some what? Apostles. And some what? Prophets. Some evangelists, some pastors, and what? Teachers. He gave this all right, as a means of spiritual gift to establish them in the infancy of the body of Christ. Look at verse 12. First word is what? Four. Four. So there was a reason he gave these things. Not for somebody today to be called a pastor, an apostle, or evangelist, and to be putting you under the law. That's not why he gave these. Right? Uh, some organizations call this the fivefold ministry. You got to have all five of these in your church to have the, the, what God wants you to have. What? Right? Watch this. For the perfecting of the what? Saints. Saints. That's the whole point. For the perfecting of the saints. How can I be made a perfect, complete, mature man in Christ when you're not telling me anything about Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, right? Look at this. For the work of the ministry, right? How can I work in ministry not knowing the ministry of, not knowing the mystery of Christ? For the edifying of the body of who? Christ. Christ. That's the whole point. For the edifying of the body of Christ. When? Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect what? Man. Not perfect in the sense of behavioral and not doing anything wrong, but perfect in the sense of mature. Right? Mm -hmm. God gave these things in order for people to be mature. Right? One of the jobs of a pastor is to maintain doctrinal order. That's why he gave these things to maintain doctrinal order at a time when you had all of this stuff going on, right? All of these different false letters, even like we do today, Amen. right? Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, why? That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to do what? Deceive. Deceive. So the whole point of these gifts, right? is to profit with all. But it has to profit you according to the what? Doctrine. That was the whole point of the spiritual gifts. They're not in operation today because we have the completion of the mystery. We have the completion of the Bible. We don't need an inferior means of communication by speaking an unknown language. We don't need all right, a sign to heal somebody by laying on the hands. We don't need all of those signs. We have everything we need. In the word, in the truth, right? Verse 15, uh, verse 15 and 16. 
right? uh, uh, verse 15 to 16, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even who? Right. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint, what? Supply it. Every joint in your body, <clears throat> right, works for a particular purpose, right? You have all kind of joints in your fingers, in your hands. You have all kind of joints of the body, and they all work together for the same purpose, which is the same way the body of Christ should be, right? But it can't work together if you got one people teaching this doctrine, other people teaching this doctrine. It can't work like that. It does not work like that. According to the effectual, effectual working and the measure of every part, making an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. See that? Your body has the ability to fight off diseases, right? Just naturally, without any medicine. It has that natural ability, okay? Right? Because that was the purpose of it, right? So if, when it comes to the body of Christ, we have the ability to fight off all of these different things, all right? Because all of us have a joint that supplies the same what? The same body. And it's the same spirit that does it all in all. All right. All right. We'll pick up here uh, uh, when we come back. We'll break now. Any questions, comments, observations? All right. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your truth. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you for who you are. Uh, Father God, we thank you now for this word. We thank you for your truth. Uh, we thank you for the edification that we may be built up uh, to become the perfect man in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.